you have to fight for survival, or your family will always live in misery. The poorest, the loneliness, and the and most afraid people, they become suicide bombers. They not dare or want to say no. It is training a lot. How to hide in crowd, how to choose a place, how to navigate to not bomb into people, how to do movement, how to check for enemies, and how, what, when to scream, and of course, how to explode yourself. I live in Gaza. I am politically Fatah. I was building an extra room in my house. My neighbor is a leader in Hamas. The neighbor was not happy for the extra room to be built in my house because it would cover his apartment view. The, the, the leader in Hamas came to the workers in my house and asked them to stop immediately working and I refused to stop them. The Hamas leader brought fighter from the Il Qassam to defend him and to force me to stop building. When the other neighbors came to see the problem, the Qassam claimed that I am a Shabak agent for Israel. They took me with them and beat me so badly. Another leader in Hamas who has a family connection with me helped me and they freed me. This friend warned me to leave Gaza because they will not leave you alone. I am stuck between Hamas hands and everyone in Gaza sure that I am a Shabak agent. I know that Hamas will kill me in any coming wars in Gaza as in the previous wars Hamas killed those who are Hamas consider them Shabak agents no matter if it's proven or not. I was 11 when I experienced the first operation of Gaza and later I heard about missions asked to be carried out against the enemies. I met a friend who told me to be active in fighting. I asked my parents to go with him a few times a day to study. My parents, my parents thought I studied Islam. We talked about revenge, about rockets and missions and freedom and Palestine and what to do to put an end to the war once and for all. I swore to never talk with enemies, to never see them as part of humanity, which was probably first time I went against Islam. When I was 14, I was ready to join fight for freedom in group organizations. But before 14, I went to lessons of how to fight, keep in control of emotions, to exercise, to not sleep, eat or care about biological needs. I lived a double life, my life as a student and son, where I made good results in school and studied Islam at home, and at the same time, I learned how to be real fighter for Palestine. Rockets and mortars we make ourselves not the large ones, those sent from other people to Gaza, must mean people outside Gaza cares. And I never think much about people outside Gaza. It is me, family, people, and then the enemies will live outside. The enemies are no humans at all. Only human alike is that they feel anger and hatred. That's it. There is no talking with them. All they understand is revenge. I told my parents this, my mom walked away from the room, and dad was still there looking at me for a long time, then asked me to repeat, and I said again about the enemies, about how they lost human part of them. Dad said I should look at myself and find the humanity in me, and he also walked away. I worked for the Hamas movement at the Gaza police that belongs to the Hamas government. I watched the way that Hamas governs Gaza. Only Hamas leaders and members of Hamas receive the aid from Islamic and Arab countries that comes to Gaza. Most of the poor families in Gaza are not members of Hamas. They are left without any help usually. I criticized this policy by Hamas in the movement meeting and the government meetings and I was told that this is the money of the Hamas and Hamas people and we take care of Hamas people. I witnessed killing directly or indirectly of Hamas members who didn't accept the general policy of Hamas. Direct killing was by shooting them. Indirect killing is asking those members 
to do military activities near the borders so they get killed by the IDF. There were many clashes between Hamas and Fatah. I didn't agree to participate so I claimed that my, fa my father is sick and I need to take care of about him. But this put me on the blacklist and I was considered not a loyal member. I was always afraid to leave Hamas and their ideology because anyone who did that got killed. I left Gaza to ask for asylum. Hamas members found out so they fired my wife from her work. I believe my wife and children are in danger in Gaza.